Ms. Prof, thank you so much for chatting to us. So is this the beginning of the fifth wave that we're seeing? Uh, good evening, Sally. So uh, very much the beginning of another resurgence, and perhaps predictably so, because there has been roughly about a four to five month interval between the different waves. Uh, but at the same time, we just need to be a bit cautious in how we interpret current data, especially with a positivity rate. Uh, because what's also occurred in South Africa is that we've become much more selective as to who has been tested. So people that are more likely to have COVID are the ones that are coming forward for testing. The overall testing rate has decreased. So it's difficult to make head-to-head -head comparisons of the positivity rate that we're getting now compared with uh, previous waves when we were much more permissive in who was being tested. But at the same time, looking at other indices, including surveillance in wastewater, there appears to be more viruses circulating, so certainly very much at the start of another resurgence, but nothing to be worried about, uh, because this particular resurgence appears to be due to the BA4 variant, which is a sub lineage of the parent Omicron variant. And uh, as you indicated, a uh, high percentage, probably more than 85% of South Africans have got some level of protection, either through the infection or vaccination, and probably close on to 40% of people have been recently infected with Omicron as well. And you would get cross protection against this particular variant. So when does this resurgence morph into the fifth wave? So usually uh, I would say that we positively in another resurgence when the positivity rate is above 10% for more than two consecutive weeks. Uh, and again, it is going to vary by province. So Gauteng seems to be more advanced again with the resurgence than many other provinces. But when that positivity rate is above, uh, is greater than 10% for more than two weeks, I think that's a reasonable measure that we've used for other respiratory viruses to indicate that we've gone into an epidemic mode again. But uh, again, the focus in South Africa is not about a positivity rate. The focus singularly should be about hospitalization, and right now hospitalization remains uh, extremely uh, modest still for mm. COVID-19. Yeah, and as you said, um, the decoupling that we saw uh, with the vaccination, with the higher Im natural immunity, seems to still be in place. But how long will our country's estimated 80% immunity last? I mean, is this something that we can go, well, we can relax, 80% of us have had it either naturally or through a vaccine or a bit of both. Can we just say, well, it's going to last us because of those T cells, which you've told us before, can last for years? Uh, absolutely. So we obviously, with uh, SARS-CoV-2, we have only got experience for two years, and the T cell immunity seems to persist for two years and probably longer. Based on experience with other coronaviruses, including the MERS coronavirus, uh, that T cell immunity lasts for five to six years. So certainly a long period of time. But the people that should still be extremely caution, uh, cautious and uh, certainly should be going coming forward for the third doses of vaccine are people above the age of 50, 55. And particularly if they've got underlying medical conditions, they can't risk not getting that third dose of vaccine. Uh, and a good, it would be a good time to get it right now. Mm -hmm. So when we talk of how long immunity lasts, it's also about what we're trying to protect against. If we're trying to protect against infection, then immunity is short living and even less, even more short living when there's a new variant that's antibody evasive. But if we're trying to protect against severe disease and death, then that immunity persists probably for five to six years based on experience with a MERS coronavirus and what we know to be important when it comes to protection against severe disease, which is a T cell immunity. But again, not to, the, not to diminish the need for people to be vaccinated and particularly high risk individuals needing to get a third dose of vaccine as soon as possible. You've long said to us that the focus needs to be on the 50 and even the 60 plus. What are the uh, vaccination levels among that more vulnerable group at the moment? Well, not that great. We're still sitting at about 65% of people above the age of uh, 60 and probably a bit lower percentage if we take above the age of 50. So we really haven't made much progress in the past few months uh, to get an increase in coverage in that particular age group. Uh, which is really unfortunate because uh, those that are going to end up in hospital again are going to be those that are unvaccinated and particularly if they are at high risk of developing severe disease. People have okay. been infected in the past. Mm -hmm. I think what's important to understand is that the best type of immunity as it has transpired is people that have been infected coupled with vaccination, what we refer to as hybrid immunity. 
that appears to provide the most potent type of protection, not only against severe disease, but also against infection. So people that have been infected in the past certainly is still a good case to be vaccinated. Talk to me about treatment options, because there are more treatments coming online. Um, what do you rate highly um, and what is available and not available here in South Africa? So the most promising treatment is an antiviral Paxlovid, which is uh, produced by Pfizer. It's un unavailable in South Africa. I think the timelines that Pfizer has indicated is that it won't be available probably until the second quarter of next year. Uh, but that is an antiviral that needs to be taken within the first five days of onset of the symptoms, and it reduces the risk of people ending up in hospital. It's not an antiviral that we use to treat COVID once someone is in hospital. Uh, when people are in hospital, the options for treatment are still fairly limited, and particularly in South Africa, it hasn't advanced much compared with where we were a year ago. Uh, in some countries, they've tried to use what we refer to as monoclonal antibodies, but even those monoclonal antibodies, unfortunately, I would say have been fairly disappointing, especially when there's been evolution of the virus and new variants. So right now, treatment options remain extremely limited in South Africa, and all the more reason to try to stay out of mm. hospital by doing the right thing and getting vaccinated if you're a high-risk group. Why is it taking so long for this antiviral, uh, did you say Taxlovert? I think I got that wrong from Pfizer. Why yeah. is it only going to be available in the second quarter of next year if it's such a good drug? Yeah, Paxlovid. So there's a huge uh, global demand for it. Uh, and even in the United Kingdom, uh, it's only being read, made available for individuals that are at high risk. And right now, most of the data really supports its use in high-risk individuals. Uh, and it's a matter of Pfizer needing to scale up production. So one of the components is what is also used in HIV treatment, some, a drug known as Rotonover. And unfortunately, there appears to be a shortage of supply of that component of the drug. And consequently, uh, there isn't the ability to scale up production immediately. Pfizer has indicated that they will be willing to have uh, other manufacturers produce a drug. Uh, and I'm surprised in South Africa there, hasn't, there doesn't seem to be, have been much uh, mo movement, at least from the likes of Aspen as an example, and there might be discussions, but that's a company that easily could actually produce this sort of a drug, antiviral. Mm. So Important. unclear as to, yeah, so the bottlenecks are there, unfortunately, at this point. Uh, a lot of people, as winter's coming in, are thinking about getting the flu jab, and I know it's recommended. If you're in a, a situation where you're probably due your COVID booster, but you want the flu jab, talk to me about timing. Can you have them both on the same day? Must there be a gap between the two? And if you're due for your COVID jab, but you also want to get a flu jab, which would you have first? Well, you can, you can take it together uh, on the same day. Uh, there's uh, studies that have now been concluded, which shows that it is safe to receive both vaccines at the same time. And in fact, in South Africa right now, we're beginning to see some influenza virus circulating. So certainly, if you're wanting to protect your guests, yourself against flu, uh, you can't really be delaying getting vaccinated. You need to get it as soon as possible. Uh, because again, it doesn't help uh, to start getting the flu vaccine when we're in the middle of the flu season. Uh, you're needing to give the vaccine at least about two weeks for it to start working. So this would be a good time to get a flu vaccine. Although, to be honest, uh, it's unclear how well the flu vaccine will work uh, because it's been difficult to select the right strains to include in a vaccine because flu hasn't been circulating that much in the past uh, two years and it's become difficult to predict what mm. strains to include in a vaccine. That's really interesting because quite a few people, and this, of course, is just anecdotal. You'll probably have more information than me, but are, are coming down really hard with flu. Um, is that just because we're not used to flu? We've forgotten how harsh it can be. Or are there some fairly uh, vicious strains doing the rounds? Well, right now, the, the flu uh, circulation is just really starting, uh, including in Gauteng. But there's another virus that has been uh, moving around, and that's respiratory syncytial virus, RSV. Uh, traditionally, it mainly affects children who end up in hospital, and we've had large numbers of children end up in hospital over the past few weeks because of RSV. But it can also cause flu-like symptoms uh, in uh, adults, uh, and it certainly could cause people to be uncomfortable. Uh, but people that are having what, uh, what you term as a severe flu illness, it might well be. Uh, that they've actually got COVID. Uh, and even if they've been vaccinated, they might have a breakthrough infection. Uh, so if you are having those severe flu-like symptoms, I would still recommend that you get tested. 
Jose probably is not going to make much difference as to the management uh, unless you end up in hospital. Just talk to us a little more about RSV that you say is circulating uh, predominantly amongst children in the past few weeks. Um, what exactly is it and does the flu jab guard against it or is there anything you can do as a parent? Yeah, so unfortunately RSV, it, it, it infects not only children but also adults, but adults have developed immunity over time against this particular virus. We have children under the age of one and two, the first time they experience this virus, they very like, they do develop severe illness and a large percentage of them end up in hospital. In fact, probably about 30 to 40 percent of children that are admitted to hospital for pneumonia, the cause of the pneumonia would be RSV. Uh, globally, it's one of the leading cause of hospitalization as well as death in children under the age of five. Uh, it usually starts in South Africa around about February and continues for about two to three months. There was some disruption of uh, its circulation over the past two years because of restrictions and everything else. Uh, but this year, it seems to have come back with a bit of a vengeance. And like I said, causes large numbers of children to be hospitalized. Unfortunately, there isn't any vaccine at this point in time. That work is ongoing, uh, both vaccines as well as what we refer to as the monoclonal antibodies. Uh, that research is ongoing. And hopefully in the next one or two years, we will have uh, monoclonal antibodies that would be available to protect children from being hospitalized against this because of this virus. Sure, that's really quite worrying to hear about RSV, uh, quite a severe um, respiratory infection. No vaccine for that as yet. But thank you very much for keeping us aware of not only COVID, but other lurgies that are circulating. Professor Shabiamadi from Bits University.